Hello again everyone, just me and Hammer here. Today we're going to uh, assemble a equipment defender backpack sprayer rack. Available at equipmentdefender.com. No, I am not affiliated with them. Maybe one day I'll be. Package got a little wet sitting over in the corner. Until I had time to put it together, y'all landscapers know how it is. Do things when we can. Start by ripping into this bad boy. Didn't want it coming apart, that's for sure. All right. So this is what it looks like coming out of the box. Make sure we don't cut nothing valuable. All right, I'm going to get everything laid out there again. I'm by myself. No cameraman or woman. Maybe one day. When you get it out of the box and uh, unwrapped, it is very well wrapped in saran wrap and all kind of protective coating. You get it out, you have two of those, two pieces here. I don't know the exact names of them, but we'll find out shortly. I'm assuming that's where your spray sits. These are solid round stock with holes drilled in them. So you can imagine how well built this is. I mean, it's very thick, very heavy duty. I mean, it's really nice. Very, very stout. And I'm guessing that's where your, your wand goes for your sprayer. And here we have the backpack sprayer rack assembly instructions all right step one slide the wand holder onto one of the steel rods all right this is what it should look like um, it does not say this in the instructions but this round stock goes into this piece here so you want it to be able to have just enough just enough to stay flush with the bottom uh, I'm assuming that's where they want it, but there's no there's no description of where it stops, but it looks like it's flush. And one other thing, you have these holes in the top. I thought they would be for something, but I don't believe they are used for anything. In this rack, they may use it. I think this bar goes into the blower racks as well. It's the same one I have on the blower rack. So... I don't see any use for it. Maybe somebody can correct me. I'm sure somebody will. But all right, step two is to put both round pieces. I would say put both of those circles at the top or holes. Step two is insert steel rods. And step three is slide part B and C onto the steel rods. This is after step three. It says for now leave all set screws loose because I'm sure you have to adjust it to your sprayer and or if you're putting it on, on an in, or in an enclosed trailer or on an open, open trailer. But it says leave all set screws loose for now. I'm moving on to step four. Install part D onto part E. So the latch rod onto part E. Here is part E, and here is the latch rod. All right, there we go. It's all bolted down. I will say they come with these star wrenches or hex wrenches, whatever you would like to call them. Um, I would like to say that this latch rod itself is threaded. So this piece right here is threaded. Your bolts go in here. The latch rod itself is threaded, and that, uh, these two nuts act as jam nuts as an extra safety where they just don't back off. So I would, what I did is I tightened up my bolts as tight as I could get them, and then I put the nuts on and tightened those down after. All right, let's move on to step five. Install part E, which is this, onto part C, which is this. 
install F, part F, onto part B. All right. So we're putting this onto this rod. And we're going to put this over here. On the video, on the pictures and images, it says all the set screws should go on the inside. So that's what I'm seeing from the pictures. And then we will mount or bolt this to that. Well, excuse me, sorry, wrong way. Like this. And I will show you the finished product in a second. I, I apologize for not having a cameraman. It would be very nice. Maybe we'll few more videos or so i'll buy some kind of phone holder or hey who knows i might even buy a gopro okay i got a little ahead of myself i skipped a part in step three it says um bolt this to here we have to do that before we move on just wanted to stop before i went any further and correct myself on that Nobody's perfect. All right. Get that put on. I'll get right back with you. All right. Got it bolted up. Sorry I missed that the first time around. Uh-oh. Don't knock it over, Rick. All right. Now we will continue with step five. We're going to jump from step three back to step five. See, something didn't look right right here, and I was like, whoa, that piece is missing. All right. So now we're going to bolt this back up to that. Okay, this is what it looks like after step five is completed. You have to uh, pull this pin before you can get this hole to line up right here. I'm assuming all of this does is when you have it, in, it locks it up for you where you can get your sprayer in and out. Um, I have it tight right now. I can't do it with one hand to show you, but there'll be a bar that connects this to that piece over there. And it flips up and that just kind of locks it in place in the up position or the, it might be the locked position. Um, but I would assume that would be the down position. All right, moving on to step six. And one more well, one more thing. These, these bolts do require a jam nut on the back. This piece is threaded. This swivels inside of there. Uh-oh, sorry. This piece swivels inside of there. Make sure you put your lock nuts or your jam nuts on because rotating up and down over time will back your bolt out. All right, step six. Install that front piece right here, this lovely piece. I'm going to lay this down before I bust my fingers wide open. Easy, buddy. So now we have this nice equipment defender piece. It goes on from here to here. All right, be back in a second. All right, we have part G, or yes, part G installed into parts E and F. This is part G with a nice equipmentdefender.com sticker on it. Um, these plates are also threaded with your jam or lock nuts on the outside but leave them loose for now it showed them putting it in the front two holes the best i could see it's kind of hard to tell but i'm assuming that's for a very big sprayer you'd move it out even more or different brand sprayer heck i might even have to i use a steel sg20 i believe it is but leave those loose for now so you can adjust it later to where you need it to fit so now we're going to move on to step seven. Uh-oh. <laughs> no step seven. I guess that is it. This is what it looks like after it's installed. We have an SG-51. And your wand holder. That's pretty neat. Can't wait to see how it works. Go grab my sprayer, put it in here, and we'll make some adjustments and see what we have to do next. Okay, part seven says basically mount to trailer 
and you have to install this piece here on your bottom adjust it to fit whatever sprayer you have remember to leave all of this loose and um, make sure it's sitting as far back in there as you can because you want it to be somewhat tight and luckily luckily my sprayer is empty so I'm not fighting a heavy sprayer while I'm doing a fitment and I'm not going to mount to the trailer yet because I don't I might have to make some adjustments with my other racks move them around and of course I weld mine to the trailer instead of bolting just a personal preference as I've said in the other videos if you've watched them but um, all you do from here on out is like I said mount part H down here get it as close as you can I'll show you a video in just a second just want to don't want to forget it okay this is where this is important but the reason they say mount it on the trailer and then put this piece on those are your mountain bolts I believe that go in your rail they go through this piece and this piece just assuming that's how it goes and it looks like it from here and then that's where you would mount it if you had an enclosed trailer there and there so these are your mounting holes to your open trailers that's why they basically made this step seven sorry i'm stuttering i'm tired i've been working all day and it's nice hot and humid can't you tell all this perspiration dripping off my face <laughs> uh all right so let's get back to it so i'm gonna go ahead and mount that piece on and i'll mount it on my trailer to where the bolts are out of the way but that is what you have to put on before you mount it to the trailer or as you're mounting it to the trailer you put it on that way you can bolt these two pieces together to the trailer all right i went ahead and since i'm not doing it on the trailer i had to kind of skip that step but i got this mounted where i need it to be for my sprayer this is an sg20 um the third notch from the back now it says bolt if i read it right it said bolt through the trailer to this so that makes a lot of sense if you're bolting just to the trailer frame itself now they do also sell open trailer mounting post which i highly recommend because it's a lot of weight to just be riding on those two bolts if it's filled up and say five gallons of chemical and, spray and water you know um i highly recommend buying this because especially on a open mount trailer because that would take a lot of the the flopping out of it and you can cut this tube to length well right here post can be cut to desired length that way it's not so high but it also gives you that extra base to sit on and it makes it stronger it won't bounce around but like i said mine will be welded from here to here and i'll find somewhere up under the bottom to do some overhead my favorite kind of weld overhead welding and weld it to the bottom so i know mine mine will be secure i know it will so i went ahead and tightened up my set screws at the top i just left a little gap because you got to think you're going to be getting in and out they have theirs relatively close i probably put twice the distance in mine and I went ahead and tightened up all four of the bottom set screws so everything is tight now. So all we have to do now is put the locking mechanism on it. This slides over your two posts and you have to adjust this for whatever sprayer you have. And I will put it on and I will close this video out because I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing me talk by now. All right. The bar is officially locked down in place. What I did was I put it in this locking mechanism and got it to wherever I needed to on this. Now remember in the summertime with the heat, you know, sometimes these things swell a little bit. I'd give it a little room. I am all the way out. So I would actually feel better on those back two. But we're going to go with this for now. I'm going to see how much it swells tomorrow. I'm going to leave it empty. That way it will swell a little bit. And I'm just going to do some little trial and error i want to see but on the sg20 i oh one more thing quick thing 
the reason this is here is so it won't bounce out. If it's empty, it's going to be bouncing around. So that is why that is there. So what I did was, see this is, I don't have a tape measure, but we'll do some guesstimations here. Takes that much for this thing to bounce out. All right. So I've got a good inch. I've got an inch before it'll bounce out. So it would have to catch just right. I may lower it down later, but all you have to do is loosen these two and these two and it slides down. But we're gonna leave it there for now because we're just gonna try it. We're gonna see what, what happens. And here's your wand holder. Ooh, that's a tight fit, but it holds it. No more flopping around on the trailer. That's it, pretty much. Fairly easy to put together. I will say, Equipment Defender has some very detailed instructions. I, I really like it. Uh, everything, every bag of nuts and bolts labeled. Uh, comes with you. On this particular piece, it comes with two, two hexes, two hex wrenches. And all you need is an 18 millimeter socket. I had a deep well handy. So, well, I had both handy. But anyways, that was the one I grabbed. My big clunky hands can hold onto that better. But all you need is the 18 for all of the jam bolts or jam nuts. And uh, that's it. Let's I'll flip it up. To flip it up, you... Oh, one more thing. I almost forgot. Glad I thought about it. Don't forget your keys. <laughs> don't forget your keys but uh same way as the uh previous video on the chainsaw rack that locks it won't let it come open that unlocks it boom very cool concept simple i wish i would have went with the combination lock but hey that was my mess up i'll learn one day spend a little extra money it wasn't like 25 maybe 30 dollars but I didn't plan on having this many racks. But once you start buying stuff, you start seeing the benefits of having it and just giving you peace of mind knowing your equipment is on the trailer and it's locked down so you don't have to worry about anything. If they want it, they will get it, yes. But it would take some very, very hard thinking to get it out. Just for the sake of the video, I clamped it down to the trailer like I did the chainsaw holder rack just to show you how to flip it up. I did have these two tight, so I did back off of them a little bit. So flip this up, and then you just pull it up from there. And then when you get all the way up, it locks in so you can set it back in without having to hold this piece up. Now when you want to unlock it, you just pull this. Probably shouldn't do this, but here we go. Oh, it's still tight. Pull that and what goes down and there it locks. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Please subscribe and like the video. I do have a website I'm working on. If you would like to buy some t-shirts to help me out. Uh, like I said, I am not an affiliate or any kind of they're not my sponsor at all, but I just like their products, so I'm going to promote it. There's going to be a lot of videos in the future about stuff that I buy. I've had a lot of people ask me over the years, where'd you get this? Where'd you get that? That looks hard to put together. So I just figured on my spare time I'd try to make some videos and hopefully maybe sell a t-shirt or two. Um, all the t-shirts that I'm designing right now are just little things i thought about you know just riding around on a lawnmower and stuff like that just nothing too funny just something out there to try to make somebody smile when they see it or or whatever but the website is uh it's going to be in the in the video somewhere i have to figure out where to put it i'm still new to this so uh but the website is www.hipmmerch.com all right. Thanks, everybody. Y'all have a great day. Stay safe and stay hydrated.